Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today we're going to learn again about the differences between Sunni and Shia Islam. Today with the video of Sayed Anmar Nashkawani. Guys, I have to say, don't get angry at me. I'm simply reacting to videos that viewers sent me. Oftentimes people tell me, man, why do you react to this guy? He's spreading falsehood. Why do you spread this doctrine, this ideology? This is totally false. I have no idea. People simply send me videos and I react to them. Hence the channel's name, Bobby's Perspective. I'm simply sharing my perspective on things. I'm not saying that therefore this is absolutely correct or absolutely wrong. We're simply watching videos about Islam at the moment. That's pretty much it. So with no further ado, let's have a look. I am Dr. Said Ammar Naqshawani and this message is brought to you by the Mohsin and Fawziya Jafar Foundation. What is the difference between Shia and Sunni? Over the past 20 years, you find the terms Shia and Sunni have always been discussed in the news. When you hear about tensions in Iraq, tensions in Syria, tensions in parts of Afghanistan and Pakistan, whenever we hear the terms related to those tensions, it's always about two groups of Muslims, Sunni and Shia. And even True. within those two groups, you'll find that there are splinter groups which are also discussed. And so therefore, when the non-Muslim looks at the religion of Islam, they ask this question. What is the difference between the Sunni and the Shia? First part of this answer that I'd like to give and make clear is that there are many more similarities than there are differences. Similarities in which sense? Similarities in the sense that Sunni and Shia Muslims believe in the same God. They believe in all the prophets of God culminating with the final prophet, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. They believe in the Holy Quran as being the word of God. They also believe in the importance of the five prayers and fasting in the holy month of Ramadan and going to visit God's house in Mecca at least once in one's lifetime and being charitable, respecting one's parents, helping the poor and the orphans. They I'm ignorant on the subject, but I heard that Shias only pray three times per day. Please let me know in the comment section what is right, what is wrong. They believe in all of these concepts and they believe in the importance of purifying one's soul. They believe in the importance of understanding the biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family, and loving him and that he is seen as the greatest creation of God in both schools. So where then is the difference? I believe the difference ties into this last comment that I made. And that is, the difference between Sunni and Shia comes in which path to choose when you're seeking to understand the original teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and yeah, his family. That makes sense. The aim is the same. How do you get close to his teachings in order that you achieve salvation? One school undertakes a particular path that is represented with the notion that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, passed away and he left it for his community to elect a leader and they elected Abu Bakr and he was known as the first caliph. The and from then on, the rest of the companions who became authorities as well as the companions who lived alongside them are the best exemplars for anyone who seeks to find an understanding of the original teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family related to this world and the hereafter. Correct. This is the Sunni perspective. Those are the rightly guided Khalifs and they come after Muhammad and therefore are the best of generations. So where then is the difference with the Shia? The Shia likewise admire the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family, revere him and want to get close to his teachings. But the part that they have undertaken was a belief that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his family, would no way leave this earth without having made clear who that caliph would be. In contrast to the Sunni opinion of an election taking place or an implicit appointment, the Shia believe that on several occasions, and notably on an occasion known as the occasion of Ghadir, on that particular occasion, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family, announces his son-in-law, Ali, son of Abu Talib, to be the first of the leaders of the Muslims known as a Khalifa or as a... That's actually surprising to me. I didn't know that it was the son-in-law. I thought that Ali was the cousin. An Imam representing the prophetic 
message. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, is the final prophet of God and the person who looks after the teachings of the final prophet. As can be seen in a famous narration that says, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate. Of course, when we therefore look at this, we see that the ultimate aim of both groups is to try and reach the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, in turn, trying to obey the path and the message of the Lord. The but then from there, the differences arise. The schools both admire the prophetic households. However, there is clearly an admiration which can be seen at a greater level in the Shia school than in the Sunni school. Not to say that the Sunni school does not admire the prophetic household, but the Shia don't just stop at the grandsons of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. They move on to the great grandsons and the great grandsons and the great great grandsons and see them as authority figures when it comes to the world of gaining knowledge and spirituality. Right, this is the way that I understood it, that Shias believe that authority is given by bloodline. So the great, great, grand, grand, grandson of Muhammad would still hold the authority of Muhammad and nobody else could hold that position, so to speak. You need to be blood related to the Prophet in order to have authority. And therefore, out of their perspective, the Khalifs, the companions, they couldn't be the followers or the rightful followers of Muhammad. Therefore, that becomes the main difference between the two schools. Right. And a lifetime of seeking to gain closeness to the Prophet, peace be upon his family. Do you go through the family and believe that they are chosen by the Lord? Or do you go through the companions who lived around him? It's sad that sometimes these tensions exist and there is a lot of ignorance around us. But we certainly hope for a day where we can sit together on the table of brotherhood and be able to discuss our differences and indeed discuss the different issues that the world faces today. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. A very basic summary of Shia and Sunni divide. Most of the things I already knew. Please let me know in the comment section, what do you guys think? Who is closer to the teachings of the Prophet? Is it the Shias that believe you have to be related by bloodline? Or is it the Sunnis that believe that Abu Bakr was the first caliph and the companions preserved the message of Prophet Muhammad? And by following the Sunni hadiths, you are getting closest to the Prophet message. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. Meanwhile, I'm going to do my own research as always and keep on reading in both sides. Try to understand what the truth really is. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. Over 70% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. That means that most of my views come from unsubscribed viewers. So please do me the favor and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you stay up up to date when I upload a video. Thank you very much for that. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.